Metabolism, metabolism, metabolism. Let's talk about metabolism for today. So I'll say it like this. 80 to 90% of the people that apply for our coaching program at Heartletics, they struggle with having a slow metabolism. And we're going to go over, right, some, you know, symptoms. That way, if you're also struggling with having a slow metabolism, you know. And at the end of this, you're going to understand on how to speed that up to make things a little bit better for you. Because when you have a faster metabolism, odds are you could probably burn some more body fat. So back to these people. 80 to 90% of the people that apply for our coaching program that struggle with having a slow metabolism, uh, I, I want to first break things down, right, just for clarity. Uh, typically, before they get signed up for our coaching program, they go through what's called a discovery call, where they speak with either myself or somebody from my team uh, just to figure out if coaching is a good fit for them. Uh, on this call, we want to learn more about their past, what they've tried, and if you somebody that tried all these different crash diets and cutting out different macronutrients and eating very low calories and these detoxes and these cleanses and these juices – Guess what? You've probably struggled right now, currently maybe, with having a slow metabolism because you pretty much sabotaged yourself, you know? And so we want to learn that. Like that's vital education for us as coaches to make sure that, okay, if they do have a slow metabolism, we got to change things around, you know? If once again, it makes sense for us to move forward into our coaching program and enroll them and help them. But most of the time we hear on these calls that, you know, it's like, hey, what do you think the, the issue is? And they'll tell us, oh, I struggle with portion control. I'm overeating. And it's just like, it, it's, it's, I think that's what everybody thinks that their issue is, why they're overweight. But the reality is if 80 to 90% of the people that apply for a coaching program have a slow metabolism, if you're listening to this right now, your issue is not portion control. It has nothing to do with that at all. It's probably the fact that you have a slow metabolism now, once again, we're going to go over some signs and symptoms, and lastly, how to improve on that to make things a lot easier for you. That way, you can learn how to speed that up in the right direction. But one of the biggest signs is that you're having a hard time actually eating properly for your body type. And I'm going to explain that here in a little bit because, you know, when somebody signs up, they tell us that their issues portion control. They then go ahead, they get their personalized meal plan template, their nutrition goals. Uh, we typically notice that, you know, we tell them like, hey, it's very common, you know, it's very common for somebody to feel full, bloated, uh, having a hard time hitting their calorie goals, having a hard time hitting their macronutrient goals at first. And that's just a common sign that your metabolism may be slow. And sure enough, Within the first, you know, few days of this person getting used to, you know, uh, tracking things on our app and trying to hit their goals, sure enough, yeah, I'm having a hard time hitting my protein goal, having a hard time hitting my calorie goal. And then we educate them about, you know, consistency, you know, trying your best to do these certain things that we're going to explain here next, right, and to speed that up. And then over the course, I want to say, you know, after a few short weeks, uh, they don't feel like that at all. You know, they're feeling, you know, like hungrier more often, which is a great, great sign, you know. So hear me out. If you're somebody that's listening to this right now and you think that your issue is portion control, it has nothing to do with that at all, realistically. Uh, the issue could be you have a slow metabolism and if you have a hard time hitting your protein goal, right, then guess what? Like you have a slow metabolism. That's it, you know. And, and here's the thing. If you're struggling with what is your protein goal, Let's say you're not a coaching member, like what specific protein goal should you focus on? It's very simple. Take your body weight, multiply it by 0.8, okay? Multiply it by 0.8, your body weight, multiply it by 0.8, and just track that, you know? Try to hit that many grams of protein a day and see what it's like for you. If you notice that, oh man, this is hard, I feel full, I feel bloated, I feel stuffed, guess what? You have a slow metabolism. That's the reality of this. What are some other signs that you have a slow metabolism? Well, if you're constantly tired, you know, think about it. Like uh, two o'clock hits at work and you're dead tired, you're searching around for a cup of coffee and you're having a hard time to stay awake, that's a sign of a slow metabolism. If you're, let's say, constantly stressed out, having a horrible time with sleep, right? Like that's a sign of a slow metabolism. Another thing is low sex drive. You know, and we talk about this often that, you know, when you focus on investing into yourself and, you know, trying to better your health, 
it's not just just so you look good with your shirt off and see a number on the scale go down it's like no this this works in all aspects of life right better sleep less stress uh, more sex drive everything like this goes hand in hand you know so before we go into some specific tips on how to you know speed up your metabolic rate your metabolism I first want you to understand what's called the TDEE, which stands for Total Daily Energy Expenditure, okay? And this is basically different ways on how you're burning calories within the body. Now, your BMR, your basal metabolic rate, this is the most bang for your buck, you know? And so what's next after that is your NEAT, Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis. And then you have TEF, right? The thermic effect of food. So the food that you're consuming, right? Guess what? Like this is all going to be broken down. And as you're breaking down the food, digesting it, you're burning calories. And then lastly, eat, right? EAT, exercise activity thermogenesis. So uh, backtrack, right? BMR, what is that? Your basal metabolic rate. Well, that's just think about it. Like your organs, you know? Uh, you just You can just sit there all day long, not eat anything, not move a muscle, your body's still burning calories, you know, and that's the biggest bulk. And this is why we always say, hey, the more lean muscle that you have on your body, so the more muscle and less body fat that you have, you're going to speed up your metabolic rate so much faster simply because your muscles are going to be consuming what more energy to break things down, right? It needs more energy, right? So you're going to be burning more calories just by having more muscles on you. You know, more body fat, guess what? You're not going to be breaking down as much, you know, uh, energy. You're not going to be utilizing so much. So your BMR is very, very, very important. And then next, that, you know, NEATS, the non-exercise activity thermogenesis. That's simply just moving around. Me just fidgeting my hands or uh, me walking around the house or whatever the case may be. Just being not sedentary. And that's key. Not sedentary. Me just being active, getting some movement in it. That's going to be a big driving force with helping things out when it comes to burning more calories. And then you have uh, TEF, the thermic effect of food. So I mentioned about, you know, as you're consuming food, it's being broken down. And so it's broken down like this. Your fats are anywhere from zero to 3% energy, right? It doesn't really require a lot of energy for your body to break down fats. Your carbs, a little bit more. I would say anywhere from like four to about 8% energy, but your protein is very high. It's anywhere from like 20 to 25% more energy that your body needs to just break down all the amino acids within the protein molecules and digest that throughout the body. So eating more protein is going to really help you burn more calories in the long run. And then lastly, that exercise activity thermogenesis. And this is like, you know, you actually doing things like resistance training and strength training and, you know, uh, cardiovascular activities, whatever the case may be, swimming, like biking, all these different things, right? You may think, you know, like, oh, like I got to go work out today and everything like that. But this is why we always tell everybody, if you're missing out on the nutrition aspect and you're missing on the knowledge aspect on how it all works within the body, you're missing the boat. Because (laughs) the exercise is literally just the sprinkles, the icing on the cake, plain and simple. But here's the thing, Uh, specific exercises, right? Like let's say strength training resistance, right? That is going to help you increase your BMR, your basal metabolic rate, which is the most bane for your buck when it comes to the total daily energy expenditure. Simply because, think about it, if you're lifting weights, you're putting on muscle, you're building muscle, right? Right? And so it's going to be increasing your BMR that way. So even though it's at the very top of the iceberg with the TDEE calculation, right, it has the biggest effect on what's going to be the driving force for speeding up your metabolic rate. What are some other things, right, when it comes to speeding up your metabolism, what you can do? Because I just mentioned the strength training. That's huge, right? Lifting weights, resistance training, focusing on progressive overload, having the right amount of frequency with that. That's awesome, right? That's what you want to do. Obviously, hitting your protein goal, um, that's probably the best thing, honestly. More important than doing the resistance training is hitting your protein goal. And I would say lastly is sticking within a calorie range that best suits you and your goals. Watching this little exercise is going to help you out. So this empty cup is, think about it like being your body, okay? And right in the middle, all right, the middle of the line, this or the middle of the cup, I should say, this is your maintenance, 
And so basically you're eating around your maintenance plus or minus a couple hundred calories. You're not losing weight nor gaining weight. And then right above that line is what's called a calorie surplus. Now, in terms of that, you could be putting on muscle or putting on body fat. It just all depends. Because if you're eating a calorie surplus, but you're not doing resistance training, you might be putting on body fat. But if let's say you are doing with some resistance training and that calories is mainly all protein, you could be also, you know, burning body fat, putting on muscle at the same time, body recomposition. Now that maintenance line that we just mentioned below that is what's called your deficit. And this is where you want to be at when it comes to terms of losing body fat. But remember in the very beginning of this, I kind of mentioned that people think that their issue is portion control when it's really not. Here's exactly the problem, right? And this cup is going to really help you with a different mindset and perspective. And this is why at Heartletics, we always educate people that food equals fuel. You know, at the end of the day, a car needs gas in it to get from point A to point B. Your body's no different. It needs calories, right? To help you burn more body fat. So imagine, right? You got this empty cup. And uh, let's say that you're putting in some, some liquids, okay? Well, so those liquids, if let's just say right here's your maintenance, if the liquids are below your maintenance line, below the middle of the cup, you're in that deficit. You're losing body fat. If it's around your maintenance, you're maintaining your weight. And if it's above, right, you maybe you're putting on some muscle or whatever the case may be. But regardless, it's in the cup. It's in your prime zone that you want it to be in. Here's the biggest problem. People think that they're putting in way too many calories and like the liquids, right, are overflowing, coming off and out of the cup. That's 100% true, right? That is how you store body fat is by eating way too much, right? Then your body can burn and those calories, right? The liquid is coming out of the cup and overflowing. You're storing body fat. But 80 to 90% of the time, it's because you're not putting enough calories in. So remember, here's the cup right here, okay? You're not even getting any calories. You're all the way down here. You think eating like a few meals a day and, uh, you know, very little small like portions is, is enough food for you to burn body fat? Completely wrong. And this is why I'm not a fan of like different things like crash dieting and intermittent fasting because if you don't know how to do things like that, you're going to be do, like making things harder for yourself. And that's realistically why over, I don't know, 45% of the U.S. population is considered obese or overweight. Literally, and one in four adults suffer with having high blood pressure simply because they don't have proper education on knowing how their body works and knowing how uh, nutrients works, uh, calories, macronutrients, you know, uh, resistance training, uh, you know, when to make adjustments, everything like that. This isn't just, you know, go to Google, go to YouTube and type this information for free and try to figure it out on their own. It's like, no, like this is why coaches like myself exist. This is why trainers are out there to help people. It's just like so many times people think they know what the issue is when they really don't. They think the issue is portion control when it's really not. And hopefully this little analogy helps you out. Remember, food equals fuel. So don't be that type of person thinking, oh, I'm overeating. It's like, no. The problem is you're not eating enough. So you can see there's a lot that actually goes into this when it comes to coaching and education and teaching somebody specifically for their body type and goals. Just focus on your protein goal, and that's huge. Try to really hit that bare minimum of grams of protein. Remember, take your body weight, multiply it by 0.8, and that's going to help you out big time. And then lastly, you know, some resistance training, all right? That, that's amazing because that's going to be helping you put on the muscle, uh, but also just daily movement. You know, just try your best to be more active, get more steps in, right? That needs non-exercise activity thermogenesis. That's a huge aspect to all of this. But here's the biggest takeaway, and this goes for everybody to listen and really take note of this. Everybody's metabolism is different. Depending on that person's training, depending on that person's past with what they've done before in the past when it comes to crash dieting or even, you know, hey, if they played sports growing up compared to somebody that didn't play sports, like... All of this has a big aspect. Somebody's occupation, somebody's stress at home, somebody's sleep, all that goes into factor. So everybody's different. What we typically see is just depending on the individual, right? Anywhere from three to six weeks of consistency before somebody's metabolism is, is fully adjusted and in the right direction of speeding right back up to where we like it at Heartletics as coaches. So just keep that in mind. The beginning 
eating, you know, you feel full and bloated and everything like that, guess what? Consistency is key. Try your best to hit your protein goal. Be consistent with that and your calorie range and being active. And I promise you, right, anywhere from three to six weeks, it's going to start speeding up in the right direction and you're not going to be feeling like that way anymore. So I know there's a lot of value, a lot of education, but hopefully uh, this has made things a lot easier for you in terms of your metabolic rate and most importantly, how to speed up your metabolism.